Good afternoon or evening. Um, welcome to today's Thunderstorm Outlook for the weekend and early next week. Before I get into the forecast part, um, I'm just going to look at the radar, show you the radar, current radar images here. And as forecast in the video yesterday, the south, no, the western, that's where my compass ends up, the western part of WA here is seeing some thunderstorms. Now, the radar network is really crap out this way. And as you can see, once it actually loads, the area here is not covered. So um, there are thunderstorms actually happening there. But how do I know? I shall show you exactly how I know when I just swap screens. Okay, so I've just swapped over to the uh, Weather Watch Met Center, and even though, like I said, that radar, that area over here is not covered by radar. However, the lightning detector network, I'm not sure who owns that network, if it's satellite or whatnot, but the, the lightning detector network does cover this area. So although we cannot see what intensity the rainfall is, we can see that there are storms over this little area. Now, I don't like the windy radar, don't like it whatsoever, but I'm just going to swap over to that next because that does show lightning where the radar area isn't covered. So give me just a moment. Okay, so I've just swapped over to the windy radar here. Now as out, I'm not a fan of it. Don't like it. It's it's pretty crap, but um, it does show the lightning tracker, so it does have some use to it. Now as you can see, there are quite a few storms dotted about, and you'll hear every lightning strike that's detected makes like a little ting noise and flashes. Um, so we have a few storms outside the radar network around here. So they are what were forecast yesterday in the video. And they have, unlike southeast Queensland yesterday, these ones have actually formed as expected. Okay, so we've got back to the um, Met Centre here from Weatherwatch. And we're now going to get into the forecast part of this. So this is for eight, uh, 6.30 on Friday. And as you can see, the sweat index, which I explained the other day in a video, is a severe weather threat index. Not how much sweat that you'll be sweating, although probably people will be sweating a lot out there. <coughs> but, um, yeah, that's not what it is. It's, it's a measure. It basically takes all these little um, measures down here and puts them into one index. The issue with this is it's only really for severe thunderstorms, so it doesn't really, it's not really relevant for normal storms, as normal storms technically aren't said to be severe weather, even though they can have heavy rainfall and stuff. So this one is more for the actual severe rated thunderstorms. So you can see here that the, the thunderstorm activity should remain quite severe around inland parts of uh, WA and the western parts of South Australia this evening. Let's track this a little bit further. As you can see, the, lo the low pressure system is about here. Um, and as it tracks to, or it could be around here, um, as it tracks to the east-southeast, this uh, area of severe weather potential will move with it. And as you can see, as we move it forward, it moves towards um, more populated areas. So at the moment, where we go back here, it's mostly uh, in the middle of Whoop Whoop. So very little people are going to get affected by this. But <clears throat> as we move forward, see it, it ends up getting into the more populated areas of South Australia. Although the severe weather index does decrease a little bit, 
the potential is still there as it reaches Adelaide. And then as we go into as we go into Sunday morning, the severe weather is still over parts of South Australia, but it's starting to creep into Victoria here and into the southwest parts of North, New South Wales as well. So as we just quickly thumb forward here, as you can see, as the, the low pressure moves forward, so does the severe weather. So there's a chance of some severe weather in western Victoria and again southwest New South Wales during tomorrow morning and into the afternoon, including Melbourne. It's not as severe as what was seen over in w uh, SA and WA, but it is still possible that there could be a bit of severe activity, especially inland, around the ranges, possibly even off offshore. Um, and most of these storms will move from the northwest towards the southeast. So as we just keep moving forward, that severe weather moves east and eventually going off the coast for south southern areas. Okay, now we're going to move back in time a little bit again and we're going to go back to Sunday. Now Sunday was looking like a fairly decent day across southeast Queensland. Since yesterday the expected conditions have decreased a little bit. Um, not a massive decrease as you can see as we move forward you got those dark reds there but it's not quite as bad as it originally said so i would still expect as long as we don't get a repeat of uh thursday i will still still expect some severe thunderstorms around the southeast queensland inland especially up in uh central coast area around uh places like in june roma those kind of areas I wouldn't expect too much activity to reach the coast um, because we are seeing a lack of prompt conditions out that way. Um, but still, it's it's as we know with weather, it can change, and uh, I wouldn't say it's like a hundred percent not going to happen. But most of the time, the coast does miss out on a lot of activity unless it's particularly strong. Now we'll keep moving forward so by the afternoon that severe weather index has dropped and as we move into Monday we're looking at another bout of possibly worse weather, uh, severe thunderstorm weather because of the darker colors here. So Monday is actually currently looking better than Sunday now. And now this seems to be the theme of everything going on. So it always gets pushed back, but it does eventually happen. <coughs> so uh, looking at the, um, the index here, Monday is definitely looking like a better day, especially for areas up in the Sunshine Coast and Fraser Coast. Uh, we have those purples in the index here, which is indicating more uh, conductive conditions for um, severe weather there, severe thunderstorm weather. And that eventually on Monday moves off the coast and by the evening is completely cleared. Now, usually I don't go too far into the future, but I will have a little... Um, a little dabble in what's going and I haven't looked this far so I'm learning as I'm recording of what could possibly happen so here we go um, we're looking at Tuesday now and that severe weather though not as severe potential as previous days is looking a bit more widespread across inland areas of the north northwest uh, the Capricorn coast uh, with Sunday's 
and even possibly up towards uh, the Ingham area, mostly on the mountains, they probably see some thunderstorm activity. And as we move into the evening, again, as often happens, the activity will slowly move off the coast and weaken with um, conditions stabilizing behind everything. As you can see, that severe weather index drops quite significantly. And on Wednesday, pretty much disappears almost. So that's pretty much the rundown of that um, for today. And um, I will do more updates over the coming days. I'll do another one tomorrow, uh, a more general weather update, as well as a, um, a update on the thunderstorm activity and what it looks like it might happen. But for now, have a good day and thank you for watching.